What's going on? Tonight, we're going to talk about making money. That's right. That is the topic for tonight. Making money. Hold on a second. Let me go ahead and bring some people into the room. No, there's a lot of things going on with YouTube. Like my wirecast doesn't work the way that it used to. And it creates this disharmony. But one of the things I want to talk about when making money, the truth awesome chicago what's going on what's going on people i'm eating tonight i do not have knowledge of the new uh fico scoring model i know it's going to kick in in 2021 what's up people Awesome. So we're going to talk about making money. And, you know, I've been watching a lot of videos. There's this cat who talks about Forex trading. And one of the big problems with people talking about money, and this was my problem with Omni and the Hellcat. He gives these rants, he gives these lectures, but he doesn't tell you how to do Jack. He didn't say like I was selling copyrighted content and that's how I make all my millions. On. He didn't say that. So what we want to do is get into the it's um there's a lot of noise about it, but it's not going to go into effect in the banks to 2021 because they're just not going to get rid of their stuff. But we're going to talk about making money. And the first thing you need to do to make money is do something. There are many people on the internet that will give you platitudes, give you a general sketch of how to make money, but they will not tell you exactly how to make money. I'm eating chips. We hang out tonight. I've got these Tostitos. So let's go ahead and talk about if you own a painting company, how do you make money? First of all, you advertise that you own a painting company. Then you get leads. These leads turn into customers. Then you go and you do the painting and then the customer pays you. That took, what, 30 seconds to tell you how to make money at your own a painting company. I've seen people talk for an hour and never get around to telling you how to make money. Here's the truth about making money. Making money is simple when you do the right things. How do you make money online? Sure, go ahead. Start your clocks. What you do is you find an audience online. That's the first thing you do. You do not create your product or service. You find an audience first. Once you find that audience, then you talk to the audience. You put out content. This is called content marketing. And as they come in, you'll see some of your content does better than other content. So what you would do is adjust your contents to all of that. And then you would create a product for that audience. That's how you make money online. That's one way. There's, there, there's several ways to make money online. Uh, let's go ahead and talk about it. How did I first make money online? Selling on eBay and Craigslist. That was the first way I made money online. And I made money online that way for years. What I would do is I would go out 
I would buy storage auctions. I would take the contents of the storage auctions. I would sort them and I would go and put them up for sale in various places like eBay stuff went on eBay, the Craigslist stuff went on Craigslist and the trash went in the dollar section. Once again, I just told you I made money in literally seconds. All right, so let me go ahead and address this. We're answering questions tonight. We're going we're gonna to talk to the people. Marvis Cotton, I'm at ground zero. No license, no car, working temp gig, staying with family at 34 since July 19, ready to be on my own. Any suggestions to come up? I'm ready to make it on my own in Miami. Start a service business. When I was doing many years ago, when I was creating 30 days to $2,500. Uh, Jake, I'm going to eat if I want to eat on camera. If I'm eating and I'm sitting here dropping knowledge that's going to make you money, you like, I'll call up because you're eating something. You stupid. You stupid. I can eat if I want to. I can drink if I want to. This, this whole notion, don't, don't be trying to tell me what to do on my channel, boy. So once again, let's get back to the pertinent information. Going back to Marvis Cotton. Start a service business. Start a painting business. Start something. And you're going to have to get you a partner because you don't have a license and you don't have a car. Uh, one of the things you can do is go on the free section of Craigslist, look for stuff that you can flip on Craigslist, offer up Facebook and eBay. I mean, literally, you know, since you're in this situation, you should live, breathe, and, you know, sweat making money. This should be at the front of your cortex. This should become an obsession for you. No taking weekends off. No, no, just, you, you just, 100, every day you wake up with a task list of 10 things to do and you knock them out. So that's what you do. Man, once again, you, you're gonna have to enlist someone to help you since you don't have a car. And this is uh, where Cleaver was. Cleaver was living with someone and he didn't have a car. I know, he, uh, I think he had a license. Hold on, chip break. Humble reform. So how do you build wealth online? You start an online business. One of the things you're going to have to do, Marvin, is look at what you can do and stop focusing on what you can't do. That's going to be one of the main things that you're going to have to focus on. Focus on what you can do and stop worrying about what you can't do. <laughs> Quinn Jackson, I've been trying to get my 18 and 20 year old brothers to start a cleaning business. They have no skills, no expertise, but they trust God. Here's the big issue, and this is another truth about making money. One of the big issues is Jake, fuck you. Let's see. Yes, Jake, fuck you. Because you're trying to tell someone who has a YouTube channel and audience what they should and what they should do. Like I, like I said, Jake in his feelings like Kiki. Yes, he is. 
Jake, that's why I said what I said, because I knew that was coming. Typically, when people come to my channel, and this is, you know, go to Disruptive Mail, Jake from State Farm. That's hilarious. Um, I've ignored the Bitcoin run because it's happened before. Bitcoin's going to go up and it's going to come down. But one of the things... This is this is true. But one of the things that, you know, going back to Quinn, a lot of people don't have no drive, man. You can tell them you can be a living example. You can be a living example of what you talk about and show that it works and people still will not take notice. There is a reason that there's the 1%. And the reason there's the 1% is there's a, there's a few groups of people. There are groups of people who take action and there are people who sit on their ass. And if you're an action taker, because this is where drive, like when you want your brothers to start a cleaning company, they, they can figure it out with Google. Well, what do we need to do? Google it. Then follow the instructions. Taking action. Most people will not take action. That is the biggest issue with so many people. They will not take action. I mean, you know, people are kind of waiting for my Lord, my Savior to come around and rescue them. Um, Mike Ellie, this this is another thing. If you are incompetent, if you're not driven, and you have a good FICO score and you borrow a gang of money, you're gonna lose that money. I recommend that people start their businesses with the least amount of money possible. They do sweat equity because the thing is, if your business is gonna make money, it's gonna make money. And this is going to become evident real quick. And I, I mean, I'm not talking about you're going to make a gang of money. Honey Bunny, and some of these people will take action, will give up too soon after they hit the roadblock. Exactly. Jason, getting started and doing things. Because one of the biggest issues is with people bombarded with ads. Some of these ads are really good. Uh, some of these ads are just straight up lies. And they're telling people that you can make a bunch of money without doing much. That is fundamentally untrue. The greater your service, the greater your profits. The greater your service, the greater your profits. Uh, speaking of losers like Jake, I have three YouTube channels that post content on how do you gauge constructive criticism versus the shit that Jake did? Typically, uh, you know, Jake is correct. There's some people who will come in here and see me eating chips and like, oh, I ain't listening to this guy. He's eating chips. Once again, you've got people who they're like geeky. They're in their feelings. Well, I feel because this is going to be a series on disruptive mail. I feel this way. Like, give you a good example. There was this chick that I was trying to date when I first started on YouTube. Uh, I wasn't where I'm now. You know, the YouTube channel was very small. Uh, I think I was only making like 5000 a month. I was trying to date this chick, and she's like, you wrote a book? You do YouTube? Huh. And she did not have now this this this, this is gonna be racial. Whenever I meet a white girl and say I do YouTube and I wrote a book and I made money, they're immediately impressed and they're like, oh, that's amazing. I meet some black chicks, they will question it. And this is one of the reasons that the black community 
is dead last in business ownership. This is a statistical fact because black people are looking for cool ways to make money. If I had been an NFL player, she'd been cool with that. If I had been an NBA player, NBA guy, she'd been cool with that. She wanted something, you know, because when she's like, well, he wrote a book and he does a YouTube channel. That at the time wasn't that impressive. Now, you know, you got all kinds of black folks trying to do YouTube. Let's see. Black Seeds and Marvis Cotton. There's a Spanish guy here in New York that doesn't speak English. He made a cart out of wood, put a lawnmower, blower, garbage bags, rakes, and pushes to the community to make money. Service business, man. Fastest way to make money when you have no money and no experience. A little Taurus. Just look around your room, see what you have. Laptops and speakers, start a business. Just have to do it. Pretty much. When I started this YouTube channel, I had a Toshiba laptop and a Sony CyberShot camera. I did not even have an HD camera. If you go back and look at the earlier videos, they're in SD, standard definition, because I didn't even have an HD camera. And I was just sitting there like, why are these black bars on the side of my videos? Because it wasn't shooting in HD. Thirty-five percent of Americans don't have ten K say facts. Uh, I don't know anything about this supply chain disruption. What type of service do people want to pay for online? Dude, there are so many things that people pay for online. Go to Amazon, eBay, and Facebook and see what people are selling. You will see thousands of products. It's not just some magical miracle product that you're going to figure out and just offer. I bought these on Amazon. They're batteries. There's a thousand and one products. Pretty much right for real estate. That's 100% true. Uh, could be the internet's been a little funky today. All right, Rebecca, that's a good deal. Rebecca, we're finalizing marketing material. Sell. Focus on selling every day. Focus on selling. Oh, Quentin Jackson. I mean, you know, like go over to Disrupt the Mail. I put up a video talking about feminine men. And the, the big thing is men who are feminine, it wasn't their fault. They were raised in an environment that created that outcome. They had no choice. And I'm going to do some more videos on how to combat that. B Love's life was on 60 million. She made million DD on camera. Wow. Fajita, a great man once said, don't get behind the product, get behind the audience. This, this is the secret to making money online. Find a massive audience that you can sell to. And it's the same thing with YouTube. Because uh, like I've had a few people email me, and this is what's kind of happened to a lot of people on YouTube. Massive drops in traffic. It happened to me about three years ago. And it's starting to happen to a lot of people because they're just like, hey, the traffic's gone. What is happening is that the big, juicy topics are taking over YouTube. Like the girl who did van life. We're having an argument in the video marketing group because her channel's starting to tank. And because people don't like my term of the word tanking, 
because she still gets a gang of views. But she went from putting up videos getting 4 million views to putting up videos that the latest video only got 300,000 views. And because they're like, that's more views than I get, she ain't tanking. And, and I mean, clearly she's tanking because one of the things I do is I study a lot of YouTube channels and there's this other chick who blew up overnight and her channels isn't tanking. Her views have been consistent and they've been consistent going up. And one of the, this is a good thing with, about the truth of making money. You can't talk to normal people about making money. You just can't. Uh, Mike Ely, dropshipping isn't a bad business if you know how to run traffic. If you know how to run traffic, it could be a great business. This is the big issue that people who start a Shopify store run into. They get into it. They buy a course, they listen to all the people on YouTube, and then they get to the nitty gritty of having to generate traffic, and that's where they get stuck. Humble reform, I'm from a lower income lifestyle. How can I be process that what's an example of an audience? Humble reform, you're an audience member. You're a member of Hustlers Kung Fu. You're a member of the audience. Why do you come to this channel? What do you learn? and write that stuff down and then apply it to going looking for another audience. There are people who like dogs. There, there's a lot of, there are people who love cars. There's a lot of car channels that literally have millions of subscribers. These are audiences, a group like, you know, I don't like the car, but there's a big audience for the Dodge or the Charger Hellcat. There are people who love that car. You start a YouTube channel and you own a Hellcat, you will get views. Because there are people who love that car, the raw power, the they just love it. There's an audience for the Hellcat. There's an audience for Lambos. There's an audience. I, I found this today. There's this real estate agent. She got really smart. She started putting luxury real estate tours or luxury real estate how uh properties up on YouTube. Channels a little bit over a year got 34,000 views, she gets good traffic. I guarantee you she's made money from this YouTube channel because she's advertising her, her, her inventory on YouTube. So, you know, audience is everything. I don't think Amazon's going anywhere for a few decades. I give Amazon another 20 years to make billions of dollars. Mukbang. Yeah, I saw one of those videos. Oh, uh, Quentin Jackson, what's happening is YouTube, if you had a YouTube channel 2009, 2010, 2011, they didn't care whether, who watched it. You know, if your subscribers subscribe to your channel, they YouTube would send everybody in your channel a notification when you put up a new video because in the beginning few years my views were much higher than my subscribers i would get two three four five six seven thousand views a video i had two thousand subscribers so what youtube is doing is controlling the traffic they're pushing the traffic to the best performing videos so that's what they're doing Jason Clutchy, yeah, you go to Google. There, there's companies that do that all day long. Junie, uh, I wouldn't be surprised because this is what happens to feminine men. And once again, if you're a feminine man, don't get mad. I'm not blaming you. It ain't your fault. It was the environment that you grew up in. And we have a lot of feminized men because... There was no man in the house. That was the first step. Then when they went to preschool, who were their teachers? Female. They went to first grade to 12th grade. Who was predominantly their teachers? Female. So through their formative years, they were led and indoctrinated by women. 
And if they had a single mother, she indoctrinated him to be a resource provider and not a high testosterone man. So she indoctrinated this guy to be a simp, a wimp, a beta male cuck, which when he meets another woman outside of his mother, that beta male cuck energy doesn't really turn on her submissive nature. And this is why so many of these guys have problems. I had seven male teachers. I had about 12 male teachers, 12 or 15 male teachers growing up from first grade to 12th grade. Mr. Phillips, Mr. Roberts, I had, I had a lot of male teachers. That ain't the case today. I know this one kid, he's 19 with a 701 credit score and he can make money whenever he wants to. Uh, Javina, Javier, I would need more information. What does this kid do? It, because see, this is once again, there's a million and one ways to make money. There are like this, this jackrabbit who was asking me, show us the business meetings. You know, you know the last time I went to a business meeting? was like three years ago. I don't go to business meetings. My business model doesn't require me to go to business meetings. Extraordinary money, normal people operate on a whole different parallel. Yep. Because see, most people operate from a position of lack. The battle that I'm having with these people in the YouTube group the reason that they can't see that her channel's tanking is it's like because her views are still more than what they get. And like one dude, I wish I would tank like she's tanking. And I'm like, y'all up in your feelings. I have business dinners, no camera coming out. <laughs> I would not, because the thing, everybody don't want to be on camera, especially high profile rich folks. They don't want to be on camera. Name and friendly. If you had a product idea, would you fly the channel to meet with the manufacturers? Well, you know, bef before we got to that step, who is your audience? Who's going to buy this product? Because I will tell you the story. I know someone who was selling on Amazon. They had this product ideal. They went to China, met with the manufacturers. They spent $20,000 building this product that no one bought. No one bought it. They were just like, it was sitting in their warehouse. No one bought it. Because they went, don't be product-centric. Figure out what the audience wants and give it to them. Black Caesar, Uncle G, you spot on about the business community looking for business that make money that are cool. Everyone that I talk to from the community has no interest in building something from scratch. No. This is something. Um that I've known for years. That essentially black folks, well, let's go ahead and separate. There are groups of black folks. There's progressive black folks, which are the smaller group. And then there's ghetto, hood culture, hip hop appreciating black folks, which are the majority. And if you like on YouTube, if you see black channels, they're entertainment, they're pranks, they're hip hops, they're people rapping. You don't see many scientific black channels like Rich Rebuilds. Rich actually went ahead and built his own Tesla and the channel blew up. Entertainment, music, drama. That's what you see from black folks because that's all they know. That's why I am so rare because I talk about building businesses.
I meet chicks who be at the club with two kids home with grandma. I tell these chicks to take care of the kids so they don't grow up and try to rob me. <laughs> Man, that's crazy. Eric, we have no business dinners, no cameras coming out. Black Caesar, Amazon, Netflix, and others learn how to centralize the point of sale even when ordering movies. That's why places like Blockbuster and Hollywood movies ran out of business, so they will be here. Yeah, because Netflix took Blockbuster out because, you know, back in the day, it's Friday night, we go to Blockbuster and get some movies. And Netflix made this available through the internet. I don't know what Christian Guzman is doing. I haven't watched him in a while. What his alpha land? Podcast. Like, there's this guy who, he's flimmo raps. He talks about football. Channel's huge. Because he's got hip-hop, he's got rap in the title, and he's got his intro. Hodge Twins, Brandon Carter, and Chris Jones were actually security guards before they blew up on channel. Fitness. Fitness is huge with black folks. Scott Blevin. Uh, well, once again, the progressive blacks realize that the numbers are small. They realize this. They know they're outnumbered. Quinn Jackson, that's sad, but this is one of the things. Because uh, O'Shea did this video, and he was talking. There were black folks who were actually talking about, like, other black folks did not criticize people for speaking a certain way. And uh, this was uh, the Republican guy, and he was like, oh, no, the guy under me. And I'm just sitting there like, why are these people lying? I got that, like, why you speak white? I got that in Alabama. I I'm like, why y'all lying? Thank you, JC. Maria, is ATL still a good place to come live? It depends on what you want. Mike Robinson, 100% being a progressive black is considered being lame. Part of this is systematic. Some of them don't know they can be more than an entertainment or an athlete or IG model. Well, this comes from culture. And this is why I'm always preaching against ghetto hood hip hop culture because it locks people in to very narrow channels. Flemo's dope. Oh, 18 acre place in Houston, mega gym and fitness place. Christian's growing, man. Xano's crutch, you you just you just describe hell. Try being a progressive black in a sector full of hood culture Negroes. I grew up in that. Green Machine, I've been told I'm the blackest white guy they know. See? Culture. Quinn Jackson, hey, that's the South. Like everyone's clowning Russell, even though he's winning. Russell Wilson, that's a rare event. That is a very rare event. It is very rare that the man who is a Super Bowl winning quarterback, multimillionaire, $132 million contract is going to marry someone like Sierra. And 
it's still puzzling because this dude has so many choices and he married a woman who became a hood chick by default by being a single mother of a rapper who had multiple children before she gave him the coochie. That's the big issue with that. And, you know, school's still out on that relationship. As, you know, because once again, you know how rare it is for a man like Russell Wilson to marry someone like Sarah. You know, Russell is winning. Sarah by default is winning. But you know how rare that is. That ain't normal. That ain't normal. Hey, I hope it works out, but it ain't normal. And it's got all these women who have these kids by these no good bums. And they're, they're like, there's hope for me. You know, that's like, Sierra Mary and Russell Wilson is like someone winning the lottery. That's just how rare it is. And a lot of people love their relationship because it's black love. I saw a meme the other day. Facts. Russell Wilson left a white woman for a black woman. Actually, he did not leave his wife for Sierra. He left his wife because he was unhappy and he met Sierra. Black sees one nephew squares that hip hop is going to be his ticket. He chose not to go back to college. He's working part time and is looking for another job. Hood dreams, man. Hood dreams. Absolutely, Moonlighter. Absolutely. Uh, Derek Grace is interesting. You got a yoga class full of progressive black women. That's rare. Philip Arma, the overwhelming majority of black folks to understand this so-called culture is anti-black. Say it again. Like the video I did the other night, how they were clowning this married black woman with five children and a husband. And they were like, oh, you shouldn't be having that many kids. But if she was a single mother with no husband and she got on Instagram, nobody would have said the word. Dysfunction is the norm. Blake Griffin got a white baby mom. I don't really keep up with these athletes and their antics. So I didn't know that. Black Leisure, I have no clue if uh, Russell Wilson and Sierra are going to make it. I have no crystal ball on that. Blake got with baby. Well, once again, access. If you're one of the chicks of a football player, NBA player, and you get invited to the parties, you have access that the average chick doesn't have. The greatest quarterback in the league, Patrick Mahomes, has a connect. Well, you know, Patrick's half white. His mama's white. Most black people will not give Russell the time of day before football. He's not. I don't know. Red, Russell's a handsome dude. He got that. He got that Billy Dee Williams hair and that mustache. I don't know. I think Russell would get a lot of play even if he was a UPS man the way he looks. I mean, Russell Wilson's a good looking man. I mean, just facts. So I, I, I really think he would get some play from women because he's a handsome dude. And he, play, you know, and if he wasn't playing football, I think he would still get a lot of play.
Damien Lett. Pretty much. These women definitely have these athletes. If you know the University of Alabama, because I keep up with them, most of them cats have a, a long-term girlfriend before they get in the draft, and they once they get drafted, they marry these chicks. Black Caesar, once again, I said that is rare. Because Russell, if you look at Russell Wilson's background, his grandfather was the president of a university. His father was an attorney. Russell Wilson was one of those upper middle class black kids who didn't have a lot of exposure to the hood. So when he met Sierra and she had a kid and he knew he didn't really understand what that meant. Like when Future started clowning, I knew that was coming. And, you know, hopefully Future will come down and deal with his other baby mamas. But Russell had no clue. And one of my friends had to hit me up. He said, you know, Russell probably had Sierra's poster up on his wall. And that really got to me because to her credit, Sierra was a star. Sierra had things going on. She was making money. She was dancing. She had a few hit records. So if you are a man and you can get with your dream girl, that's 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 a that's a lot of awesomeness. I went to NC State for summer school. He was my class. <laughs> Russell looks like 1980s. He's a bad cat. I mean, I can't, I can't downgrade him. Sierra's in the top. Well, she had access because of her celebrity and the circle she ran into. She had access. And this is what a lot of these chicks don't understand is they don't have no access. Oh, yeah. You know, when you see Travis Kelsey doing this little moves and stuff, he got a black girlfriend. He's been with her for a minute. Wow, that's sad, Maria. Uh, Rob Kardashian was a cuck. Black China cut Rod Kardashian. It's totally different. Russell has alpha qualities. Russell Wilson is alpha as fuck on the football field. It's just in his personal life, he was groomed to be a solid, good man. And that's what he does. Green Machine, that was just stupid. I don't even know why he was dating that chick. I don't even know. I mean, any man that would date Kareem Stephens after knowing what she did and how she exposed dudes. I mean, go ahead and Google Kareem Stephens and Mr. Marcus. The chick did a porno. He's very handsome, but shorter than you think. Oh, I know he's short. You can tell the way he throws the ball because he has to throw with those tall def uh, offensive linemen. I mean, you know, once again. So, you know, the conversation that we're having right here is pretty much very similar to conversations about money. Because a lot of people don't understand you know money they don't understand how to get money how to create money how to build money how to start a business and it's like voodoo and magic i mean yeah kareem i mean dude had a relationship with this chick he had to know Jackson, how does money and status keep people from having access to you? The first way that money and status keep people from having access to you is high income property. 
like in my neighborhood, these houses are two to three times more expensive for the same exact house on the south side. You, you could go, I, if I wanted to move over to Camp Creek, I could get a crib that's even more elegant than this crib for half the money. So this is one of the ways that people keep people out. They, like there are certain clubs, like first class in the regular plane. That's separation. Money creates separation of the classes. And the more money you have, because you got to think, like, why is someone going to pay all this money for a house? It's to keep from living next to Shanene. Uh, this is something I know for a fact. Arthur, I know where Arthur Blank, the owner of the Falcon, lives. When he moved into that house, he bought the house to the side of him. He bought both houses on the side of him, and he bought the house in the back and knocked them down. So he would not be having Shanae and nobody living next to him. Money provides access. Money provides options. And this is why you see people with money who live apart from the masses, who live a different lifestyle. I mean, because when I, I, and this is how I found out where he lived. I was going to a garage sale to buy some books. And it was um, interesting. Money does equals choices. Money equals a lot of different things. Money creates so many options. And like, once again, yeah, because there's a reason that certain neighborhoods, like this neighborhood has always been expensive. The neighborhood surrounding Emory University has always been expensive. And the expense keeps certain people out. Uh, when I was up for reality, there's this th these high-rise condos. I, I thought I was going to be a reality television star and make that long cheese. So I looked at these high-rise condos. They were called Sovereign. And this is what the real estate agent told me. Usher tried to buy a condo up in that place, and the board would not approve him. Usher, who's a multimillionaire. He couldn't get in there. This is another way that money keeps you out. There is a few buildings in town that have boards that must approve you to purchase a multi-million dollar property. This is another way they keep people out. Yeah, because see... These are the economic moats that I talk about. Like just around the corner, there is an older ranch they haven't knocked down. They're going to get a million dollars for that property because it sits on two acres. And, you know, you're going to have Hootie and you're going to have, like, oh, good Lord, man, that, that piece of crap for two. I'm going to I'm going to Camp Creek. And this keeps people out because they don't want to pay the money and they don't understand. Like. You know, I saw a meme. Lamborghini doesn't have commercials. Lamborghini and Ferrari don't have a mark. They don't have commercials. Because their customers don't watch TV. These cars are 250 to half a million dollars. So once again, this is how the rich keep themselves separated from the sweaty masses through property, through taxation, through like schools like this. This is a public school just down the street from me. But you must live in this neighborhood to go to that school, go to that school. Or change <laughs> stunned on you know i actually went to the atm 
and someone left a receipt. And I, I think they were stunned because it's like they took out a thousand and they had one point two million in their checking account. JC Sanchez, it depends upon your family. It depends upon the type of people you're surrounded by. Making free because see the average person makes thirty something to forty something. That's where the majority of workers in this country are. And then you get people who make 50, 60, 70, 80, 100. Only like 10% of the workforce makes six figures or more. So the other 90% make less than six figures. Honey Bunny, now I think about it. When I was a promoter, we did the same things that the vendor clubs charge more to the door or make it invite only to keep out certain elements. Pretty much. Pretty much. I have a love hate relationship with the HOA. Well, once again, I've never seen a, a print advertisement for, for a Ferrari or a Lambo, I've never seen one. I've seen Cadillac, Mercedes. I've seen Porsche, but I've never seen one for Lambo. They have a worldwide commercial called Racing. That's true. Events I'm going to this year, tickets are 1000 at one event, 3000 at another event, and the other event only from Chamber of Commerce. To keep the, the crowd the type of people they want. Because see, this is one of the reasons when you you date someone who makes less money than you and they see your lifestyle. They see how you're living. They see the way that you're going. They see what you're doing. They see how you're living. Because see, once again, most of the people here have money. Most of the people have money envy. They live in a scarcity mindset. The car breaks down. It's a personal crisis versus an inconvenience. Like when my car had an issue, I had another car. It was just an inconvenience. And I had the money to fix my car. So it was no stress on the brain. But if you're making $33,000 a year, your girl making $33,000 a year, and you're, you're, you're struggling every month and the car breaks down, that's a personal crisis. Neighborhoods, events keep the masses out. These are these economic moats that I talk about. From the school system, like the kids around here have been socialized so differently than the regular kid outside, or they know someone who owns a Bentley. So wealth doesn't really impress them. Quentin Jackson, I brought a chick to my crib one time. She was from the hood. We were riding down the road to my house. She said, you live here? Do you sell drugs? We didn't even get in my house. There was this, this bad little chick that I never met because she took a picture and there was a hole in the wall. She was in the bathroom and there was a hole and I kept focusing on that hole. I was like, I can't have her up in my place. So, I mean, once again, this, this is one of the things because, um, this is one of the reasons that I had an apartment for so long because it was easy for me to hide my wealth that came to the apartment complex. It was a very nice apartment complex, but it was still a nice apartment complex. It was very easy to hide my wealth. JC Sanchez, my close friends are a mix of people. Uh, I don't dictate my friendship on how much money you have. A lot of my close friends are from the military. 
I had a similar situation, bro. Due to my crib, he told me he was proud of me and knew how nice my place was. I thought to myself, dude, are you dating chicks who don't sleep on the floor? True story. When I used to sell furniture and I used to deliver furniture, I used to go to houses that literally had no furniture, except for the furniture I was bringing in. There are many, I remember I was dating this chick and her cousin had this $450,000 house. They had paper on the walls, on the windows, because they have enough money to get proper curtains. They didn't have proper curtains. So there are many people like, look here on YouTube, look at the backgrounds. There's very few people that look like they're living well. It's very few people, because see, this is why minimalism is such a big thing. It's like, I ain't gonna spend no money. I'm gonna live like a pauper. Well, I dress in hoodies and sweatpants all the time. Um, the way that I carry myself is what gets me respect. Life changer, I was called the uppity ninja. Because once again, when you're dealing with the black collective, most of the black collective is steeped in scarcity, hood culture, and rap and entertainment. Yes, yeah, Timothy LaFleur, I am part of a mastermind group. Man. Erica Williams, I, I, I remember I took this bedroom set to this couple's house. The TV was on cement bricks. I think minimalism kind of gives off the impression that a person is living well. The reason for this be the rise of the tech industry where people working in their PJs making six figures. Well, there are some people who are true minimalist, regardless of their income. They just don't believe in having a lot of stuff. But the majority of these folks is income based. Van life is income based. Most minimalists are income based because the first thing that's like, well, you know, I'd rather have the money in the bank than to spend it on this thing that I don't, I'm like, once again, you, you're making poor choices with your money to begin with. But minimalists. It's, 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 it's based on the money. Once you arrive at a certain position in life, You're going to find it hard to find friends and people on your level. Once you get in a, a progressive mode in the upward mobility. Like, I'm in a, a YouTube group and I'm in a private YouTube mastermind. And the guy who has a YouTube group has his own masterminds. He says he hates Facebook because so many people, like, I, I put in the comment, as when Janelle, the van life girl, uh, where there was a lot of talk and people were like, she had help. And I don't think she has help because she films with her camera, with her camera phone. And I don't think she had help. She just got lucky with the YouTube algorithm. And today I post something that her channel's tanking, because it is. Uh, she went from 8 million views a month last year to 2 million views this month. And they're talking about, well, that's normal. And I'm like, I've been on YouTube 10 years. I've seen channels grow month after month, year after year. Um, your normal's not my normal. And once again, uh, one of the things that happens is the so-called YouTube effort experts, because see, you're not gonna argue, yeah, that's a pretty big drop, Sierra. And I even went, like, if you own the company and you were making $8 million a month, and you went down to two million a month, you'd be concerned. And they see 
one of the reasons that you can't have conversations with a lot of people is most of America is stupid. The majority of America is stupid. Well, I feel this way, so it should be this way. Well, this is how you get money. Well, this is how rich people live. Most of America is just dumb. And once you stop being dumb and you move into a progressive class, you will see so many things that, well, she's actually got a Google. She's got a sponsored video by Google, Google Pixel. So she's getting that. Junie, I should I should copy and paste it. Just because you drop from heaven and land on the earth doesn't mean it's not a big drop because you're not in hell. This is one of the things because, I mean, because one guy was like, how does this prove that she didn't have help? If she had help for her channel to get her those kind of views, the views will be continued. And the fact that her views are dropping is proof positive that she didn't have help. Simple deduction, but most people are stupid. They want to go on what they know. Oh, van life is still a big keyword because a lot of people just don't make any money. A lot of people are um, living in damn near abject poverty, man. Especially if you live in, you know, half of the homeless people in the United States live in California. And I know you're going like, why won't they leave? I don't know. I, I really don't know why they won't leave California. Bad Wolf MMA. Part of the van life appeal is we want to be rustic and tough. We miss that. I feel I'm very tough. I don't want to have to get dressed in, in the middle of the night to go use the bathroom because I'm living in a van. I think it's more income based than people wanting to be. I think that for some people, it's true they want to be rustic. But the reality is most of these people live in this van because it's a money thing. It's a money thing. You know, someone posted on the uh, video, there are no black families like that living in San Francisco. And I have responded to him. I have a friend who works for a hedge fund and he and his wife live like that. And he black. It's the funniest thing. Cause see, this is hood culture because you don't really know anyone like that. You don't know anyone like that in your family. It don't exist. That's hood culture for you. When I used to live in the West End, I was talking to this crackhead. Well, I don't know if she's a crackhead. She seemed nice, but she said, I don't know if in this neighborhood. I go to this street, to this street, and this is all I do. There's so many people like that who, there are people who've never been on a plane. There are people who've never left their state. I mean, it's just crazy. But I know, I know, I'm like, you don't know, I mean, just like, you know, stop hating. There are no black families like this. And this is something I have dealt with my whole life. Half of my family are the Russell Wilson types. And like my mother, she just went ratchet. My mother came from an upscale middle-class black family. She just went ratchet. My uh, grandfather killed himself, and I think it just literally blew her mind.
Black Caesar, I think everyone should get on the plane and go somewhere just for a few days, just to get out of your city. Oh, man, man. each sense, Wakanda. I, I saw a dude wearing this Wakanda forever. Black folks are deep into mythology. My like Black Wall Street. Robert F. Smith employs more people, a black billionaire, than they lived in Black Wall Street. And I had someone wanted to fight with me, and I showed them the numbers, and they's like, no, 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 no. I mean, Quinn is, is, is bad. The art of becoming more, that's what was shot me when I worked in uh, Southeast DC. So many people have never left their block. A lot of people are afraid. They're afraid to be successful. They're afraid to move up. They are afraid. Well, don't go to China. But so many people are afraid. There are plenty of successful black families. They just have biracial offspring. There's a bunch of black men married to black women who are very successful. I have a friend that lives in North Carolina. He's black. His wife's black. His children are black. They're not biracial. He owns a nursing home, and he just recently started a construction company two years ago. Very successful black family. So... I think it's a myth because the, the reality is statistically most black men marry black women who get married. It's only a small number of black men who are married to white women. I mean, you know, 80% of black men marry black women. That's the majority. And once again, this is from a lack of exposure. These are closed my This is ghetto hood culture. Because I don't know nobody in the family like that. They don't exist. They don't exist. Like, like I said, this is why when I started this channel, I refused to identify myself as, quote, a black entrepreneur. I'm just an entrepreneur. I compete against everybody and I operate against everybody. So, because once you take that black label like one of the things that like uh with the sugar babies i'm going to tell you i could tell this was a black chick before i even see their profile brown sugar cocoa honey black folks have this need to embrace their blackness on every level and get mad when other folks don't like it like, I'm about to say something controversial. Some of these hairstyles, and I'm not talking about the intricate, beautiful designs of break. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about you just woke up and it looked like you didn't give a damn. You got a whole bunch of folks who walk around like this, like Cam Newton, the, the crazy stuff. I'm just sitting there like uh, Kevin Samuels did something like cut your hair and move up in America. And a lot of people got offended by that because it's like, I should be able to look like trash. And once again, this isn't, you know, someone with a nice set of carefully groomed locks. Like they actually take pride in their appearance. I'm not talking about those people. I'm talking about these folks who look like their head, their head look like a dumpster fire. They just look like, I say something about the way they look and they look like trash. It look like trash. <laughs> no more commercials for Cam Newton with the hair. Uh, Black Seaver, I really don't know much about that movement. It's called Free Locks. I said something, the girl went off on me. If you go back to the 60s and you look at how black folks dress, there was more pride and care in their appearance. 
Quentin Jackson, once again, you can have how you set it off. I've seen people with locks down to their butt and Lamar Jackson. I mean, he's made some questionable hair choices. Dominic, hey, good luck on that black on the on the uh, aspiring van lifer. Because I've seen a few black folks who are doing van life, and you know, incidentally, their channels don't really blow up. Uh, Janelle's the only channel that really blew up. You know, she's you know, but look at Janelle. She's pretty, she's small, and she's very feminine. So, you're still in the storage locker game. Hmm. <laughs> I can't stand that Anthony Hammond in here. Maria, yeah, my business model. I don't want to make it my business. Super pro black. Start a business to serve people and make your money, girl. All right, Ethan, that's just nasty. I think Janelle just got lucky. Her channel's starting to tank, so I don't think she's a plant. I recorded the video where 80% of the people in the room were white males and folks were shocked how comfortable I was. And this is one of the things I've learned from um, being in business is you can do business with even the most racist white folks if it's some money on the table. You can't do business with your cousin Pookie because cousin Pookie going to be jealous. All right. That's good to hear. Muhammad's getting better. I mean, once again, if you notice, I don't do a lot of collaborations. It's very, because if I do a collaboration, it's going to be someone that I've been able to bet. Because one of the things that happens is people typically, you can almost feel when someone's going to slide a certain kind of way. You can almost feel when someone is going to do something a little crazy. You, you can feel it. So, it's one of the reasons I don't do collaborations. It's not one of the reasons that I don't do a lot of stuff. Because, you know, I'm getting ready to, on the 15th, I'm going to kick off some new training. And I'm going to start, you know, talking about that. Because lately, yes, Alan Roger just discussed that. Yeah, I've, to collab with, I've known Alan for about nine years. And we did a video together, and it, it, it did really well. See, one of the things is when you bring people into your cipher, that's approval. You, you got them on your YouTube channel, that's your stamp of approval. And that's just going to, and time will tell if you will do well with having that person. And this is one of the reasons you don't see me do a lot of collabs because honestly, I feel that many people who are in the business sphere are full of crap. Sarah Holly, like I said, I, I have been to business events like uh, Neocon years ago. It was me, Mario Fraley. That's where we met. We became friends. There was like three black people at this event and there was hundreds of white folks. And, you know, this is one of the reasons like uh, with my assistant, uh, I was looking for some people to collaborate with and half these people don't even respond to emails. Now, you know, the professional people responded just like that. So, you know, once again, you're not going to see a lot of collaboration with me because at the beginning of the stream, I told you 
in 30 seconds how to make money. And there are people you can listen to for an hour and they will never tell you how to make money. They will never tell you because they don't know. This is one of the craziest things about the world day is you'll get somebody who will sell a product about something they've never done. This is common on the internet. It's common. Oh, that was one of my biggest problems with Omni. He would do all his preaching and stuff, but he would never say, this is what I did to make money. He would never actually, because really, you know, he was selling copyrighted content on, on fire sticks. That's what he was doing. That's why he got in trouble. But he would never like, hey, you know, you know, just work hard, you know. And I could tell the dude never had any money because he was trying to fill some holes by buying all these cars and stuff. Because I'm just you know, like, okay, if you're going to collect cars, I can get it. Amazon FBA classes, but never sold on anything on Amazon. That is common. That is common because one person said, you make more money than um, Kevin David, uh, this one guy. They, they tapped in on that because selling on Amazon FBA today is hard. It's not what it used to be. And one of the things, this is why I tell you guys the truth. Like in the beginning of the stream, I was like, find an audience, talk to the audience, figure out what the audience wants and sell them. Something. That's how you make money. That literally took 20 seconds. Um, Quentin Jackson, this is going to go on for years because people are looking for a quick fix. We got Erica in the comments. I talked about Erica. Took her three to four years to get where she got. And I, I keep saying this and people are like, I don't want to hear you, man. I don't want to hear you, man. I, want I can do it in three months. Uh, name friendly. I don't have days like that. But I, I get to control my environment, so every day is a good day. I mean, honestly, I only got a bed until 10 o'clock. I've been getting a lot of sleep, a lot of rest. My blood pressure is, I don't think it was this ever before. My low pre blood pressure is super low. Uh, I, I didn't work out for about two weeks. I got on the treadmill, this, and I picked right up where I look. So I'm well rested. Because I get to control my environment. So I don't have those ever down days where I feel paralyzed. Now, when I was in that boarding house, I had a lot of those days. Because I didn't control my environment. I didn't control my income. I didn't control where I live. I didn't control the events in my house. There were so many things that were beyond my control. And I felt helpless. And that's one of the reasons that, you know, I'm going to bring back this course. And having a life of design and intent. Sam, some good sex. Uh, Maria, I have a lot of sex. My girlfriend and I, we have sex virtually every day. And sometimes twice a day. BK Pro, that's what happens with these folks selling coding courses. They sell you a narration of the documentation, pretty much. Well, Black Caesar, Omni's got that YouTube. I, th I figure he's making like 100K a month from YouTube, and he's using that money to, to stunt because he started to stun again. But his channel went way down when he stopped stunting. I'm in groups where folks have bought a bunch of ads but don't have depth of knowledge. Yeah, I mean, there's a certain skill set you need to run ads profitably. And the first thing you got to do is spend some money on testing. Juicing will make you a beast. Yeah, it, it, you know, making money is simple if you're willing to put in the work. Uh, I think you could do it with two years or less. I think you could do it with a year.
Jeremiah, that's good advice. You should never take a loan until the business is making money to pay back that loan. So many people have borrowed money that they could not pay back because they know what they were doing. But right now, I'm only eating once a day. Because my activity level isn't what it used to be. And I was starting to gain weight, so I just cut back to one meal a day. And snacks. Wait, they're right back to where it was. Starting the 15th, we're going to start selling again. I'm going to put some other stuff up. So with that, I'll see you good people later.